chemistry this is uh, lesson six of the of foundations unit and it's on measurements and reading uh, chemistry lab equipment so we're going to start off doing a little bit more on significant figure and significant figure calculations so the rules for addition and subtraction are different than multiplication and division the rule for addition subtraction line up the decimals to add subtract the numbers that's what you have to do anyway when you're adding or subtracting decimal numbers the sig figs are determined by the number with the least number of digits after the decimal place so let's just see an example so here we have 23.45 plus 5.736 so you line up the decimals and you add just the way you normally would add decimal numbers but what you're going to do is put a line right there so the number with the least number of places after the decimal is the 23.45 it has two digits after the decimal that's the four and the five and the 5.36 has a uh, 736 has three digits seven three and six so you place a line next to the five and run it all the way down to the answer and then you add the way you normally would but the number of significant figures is going to simply be cut off at that line so it's going to be 20 and then the 8 has to be either rounded up or down since the next digit is a 6 it's going to be rounded up so the 6 rounds up uh, the 8 up to a 9 so the final answer is 29.19 so there's no relationship between how you do add, add subtract and how you do multiply multiply divide okay combination problems so that's if you have multiplications divisions additions, subtractions all mixed into one problem so use PEMDAS the order of operations and keep track of the significant figures do not round until the end of the problem practically truncating cutting off after about the fourth place after the decimal is all right in other words your calculator could give you an answer that stretches all the way across the calculator display it could be nine places after the decimal so if you cut off after four places after the decimal you're never going to have an answer with significant figures of more than four places after the decimal so it's okay to cut it off right about there but in, you do not round until you get to the very uh very end till the final answer Okay, so assign correct sig fig at the end of the problem. So example, compute the following 3.24 times 1.021 plus 12.1. So step one, using PEMDAS, you do the multiplication first. And if you do that on a calculator, 3.24 times 1.021, you get 3.30804. So, um, we're going to go ahead and in this case I limit uh, that limits it to three significant figures because of the 3.24 however I'm not going to do any rounding right now I'm just going to leave it at 3.30804 so now you're going to add that to 12.1 now you use the addition rule which is that you're going to draw a line next to the one in 12 point in the, the point one in 12.1 and that goes from all the way through the 3.3 number all the way down through the answer 0.40804 now you can round you're at the final answer so that 0.4 rounds back down to 0.4 the zero after it makes it round back down to 0.4 and so that is going to be your final answer okay let's do another one here we're going to do a, an add first and then a multiplication however PEMDAS says you do the multiplication first so 3 times 0.451 gives you 1.353 now that's limited to one significant figure but don't round it yet go ahead and do the rest of the problem and then round it and then round at the end so we're limited to one sig significant figure there so now we're going to add 1.353 plus 6 0.02 and when you do that you get the line right there you add everything up and you have 7.373 the three rounds that second seven back down to seven seven point three seven 
the addition produces three significant figures but we go back to the multiplication we're limited to one significant figure so the final answer can only have one significant figure so the final answer is simply seven the first three 7.3 rounds the seven down to a seven and it stays at seven so you can only have that one significant figure Okay, significant figure with logarithms, which you will never do, but let's just show you what it is. The count the number of significant figures in the number from which the log is being taken. That's called the argument. This is the number of digits that should be after the decimal in the log, which is called the mantissa. You don't need to know those names. So if we take the log of 12.43, you get that big long number on your calculator. However, the numbers of of digits after the decimal in the final answer is going to be the same as the number of digits in 12.43 which is four digits so since the number 12.43 has four significant figures there will be four digits after the decimal place in the final answer so that's going to be 1.0945 that second four is going to be rounded up to a five by the seven so it's going to be 1.0945. Now we're going to get into measurements and how to read measurements back in, back in the lab. Okay, so uh, frequently you'll be working with a meter stick or a ruler that has uh, centimeter gradations. So that's one centimeter. I've tried to size it on, this, on my computer screen so it's about one centimeter. So distance, the ruler below shows metric units on top, centimeters, and imperial English units on the bottom, inches. In chemistry, we do all measurements in metric units. We never use inches. The number of units on top are centimeters. The small lines in between each centimeter are millimeters. So a centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter, a millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter, and there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. There are 100 centimeters and 1,000 millimeters in a meter. Okay, so millimeters represent a precision of 0.1 centimeters. They are one-tenth of a centimeter. In addition, the measurer is allowed to estimate one more decimal place. This allows the measurement to be two places after the decimal on a, rule, on a ruler stick, which is grade, graded in centimeters and then millimeters. So let's say that again. Um, you have each of those numbers is a centimeter. Each of the small lines in between the numbers is a millimeter or one-tenth of a centimeter, which is 0.1 centimeters. So clearly you can record a measurement to a centimeter 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3. In addition, if you think it's in between two of the little millimeter markings there, you can see that it's not quite on one or the other, but it's kind of in between. You're allowed to estimate what you think that distance is from another one to nine digit. So you can actually have two digits after a centimeter measure. In other words, 1.12 or 1.04 or 1.57. So you have two places after the decimal when you're measuring in centimeters. So let's look at some examples. This, if this line is pointing exactly at the four, then you don't simply record it as a four. You have to record the correct level of precision. You have millimeter markings, so you can definitely record it as four point some number, zero, one, two, three, four through nine. But you're also, if you think it's just a little bit after the four, but not all the way to the point one, it's somewhere between 4.0 and 4.1, you could call it 4.15. You can, you can estimate. So that's, I call it the guess digit. It's really called an estimate digit, but you're allowed to guess on that, on that last digit. So the measure is exactly on the four centimeter line. If you look at this line, it's exactly on the seventh little line in between six and seven. So that would be 6.70. The measure is exactly seven millimeters after the six centimeter line. Now let's look at this one. 
10.25. The measure is after the 10 centimeter line and is estimated to be halfway between the 2 millimeter and 3 millimeter lines, the, the littlest lines there. So the estimate is 10.25. You can be sure it's greater than 2 and less than 3. You're absolutely sure of that, but you're kind of guessing that five that five might you might have guessed six you might have guessed four you're allowed to make your best guess on that digit on that very last digit 12.38 the measure is after the 12 centimeter line and is just just before the four millimeter line so you're saying it's just a little bit before the four so you're going to call it three eight you could have said three nine you could have said three seven but you your best estimate was it was 12.38 that last digit was an eight Liquids form what appears as a disc on top. Um, why that is, we'll actually talk about why it does that. It looks like a little bowl actually, and we'll talk about why uh, liquid, uh, particularly water, does that in a um, glass um, object. That The disc is called a meniscus. The height of the liquid is measured from the bottom of the meniscus. So where you see that arrow pointing, you see the meniscus over there in the picture, and where that arrow is pointing, you measure the volume at the bottom of the meniscus. Each of the small lines is a milliliter, ML. There are a thousand milliliters in a liter, which equals a cubic centimeter. That's centimeters to the third. Okay, triple beam balance. You'll spend a fair amount of time reading triple beam balances in this class. So the illustration below shows the beams on a triple beam balance. The center beam is in increments of 100 grams. That's the biggest number. The reason they put the biggest number in the middle is just ab about weighting the balance so it doesn't tip over. Because that, that object that you see there, um, that cubic object, is going to slide and you don't want the balance to tip over. The top beam, beam is in increments of 10 grams, the bottom beam is in increments of grams, and the smallest lines that you see are just like on the, um, on the meter stick, they are in tenths of a gram. That's called a decigram, although we rarely use that, that term. The reading on the scale to the right would be, see if you can figure it out, I already put it on the screen, well it's 500 plus 30, that's on the top one, so it's 530, then down on the bottom you see it's past 6, but not all the way to 7, so that's 536, and then it's hard to see, this is not a, a, a super clear um, image, but it's about at 0.8. You might say it's a little past 0.8 or a little before, but if you think it's on exactly 0.8, you would say 536.80. You still have to include the guess digit, even if you think it's exactly on the 8, because that's a level of precision that you're reading the measurement. So the 0 is the estimate digit. The resolution of the image is not clear enough to tell uh, where the point lies between 8 and 9, but if we say it's exactly on point 8, you still have to include that zero, the guess digit. So time is measured in the same way units in, in any system, whether it's the English system or the metric system. And we have seconds, minutes, hours, what we would call clock time. Then we have calendar time also. It could be days, weeks, months, years. Um, we in this class will use almost exclusively seconds and minutes. We're talking about relatively short intervals of time. Oh, and there's century. We, we could do that. For example, geologic measurements of say glaciers, things like that might be done in centuries. Okay, and that takes care of this lesson on measurements. You'll have a chance to do a few exercises on this and then actually go back into the lab and do some measurement readings and practice back there this week.